Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Well, welcome to the lecture tonight where we're going to go on a journey. I'm going to take you on a journey through your gastrointestinal tract. We're going to start with the mouth and we're going to end up at the other end. Your gastrointestinal tract is a hollow tube. And anything that goes into that hollow tube is not part of you or me until it gets broken down to tiny substances absorbed into the blood, then it becomes part of you and me. And last night when we looked at the liver, we had a look at what happens when it gets absorbed into the blood. We actually followed the journey of how it gets into the cell. But tonight we're going to have a look at the amazing process that transforms the food that's on your plate to microscopic little substances that can then gets absorbed into the blood. So this hollow tube, anything that in it is in it is not part of you or me until it gets into the blood. Because the Bible says that the blood is the life of the flesh. Now in Australia we have a lot of sheep and they're born with tails. And what the farmer does is he puts a little rubber ring around that tail, the, you know, the base of the tail, and eventually the tail falls off. Why does the tail fall off? because that little ring has stopped the blood. <laughs> so that's why the blood's called the life of the flesh. The, the flesh is only alive because it's being bathed with blood. And in our next lecture, where we look at the immune system, we'll be looking in a little bit more detail at the blood. What an amazing thing it is. But let's begin by taking you on a journey through your gastrointestinal tract. So notice that the, the main hole in is the mouth and here it is up here the mouth is the first organ and most people don't realize that digestion begins in the mouth and the pH in the mouth is alkaline so what are the enzymes that are released in the mouth one enzyme is tylen and tylen is called a salivary amylase because tylen breaks down starch. Or you could call that carbohydrate. So what is starch? Starch is anything like bread, pasta, cereal, uh, uh, bread, pasta, cereal, cakes, biscuits, things like that. Potatoes, they're all your starch. So tylen is the salivary amylase that begins the breakdown of starch. There is no tylen in the mouth of a baby. And the first teeth that a baby gets are four at the top and four at the bottom. And those teeth are called milk teeth. They're called milk teeth because that's the main food that babies should have. But it's also taste time. This is a good time for baby to suck on a piece of apple, suck on a gum away, maybe have little bits out of a celery stick or a stick of cucumber and I remember we were eating at my daughter's place in Tasmania it was the middle of winter and it was very cold and she had a fire in the lounge room so we put a sheet on the lounge room floor and we ate our meal there and her little 10 month old baby what did that baby want to do that baby wanted to do what we were doing and yet the baby's only got four teeth and so my daughter said, what will I do, Mum? I said, give the baby one of those steamed green beans. And that little baby sat there so happy thinking that it's doing everything that we're doing. And it took half an hour for that baby to get through one centimetre of that steamed green bean and little bits are all over the place. Do you know, that's taste time. But baby's main food should be milk. The next teeth that come through are the molars. The molars come through further along and the molars are grinders. And what do we grind? We grind grain. And when the molars are fully through, then the glands in the mouth release the salivary amylase tylen. So a baby should not have any starch till the molars are through. What age is that? That can be anywhere between 14 and 20, 22 months of age. And what are mothers told to give their babies at four to six months of age? Cereal. What cereal? Starch. Did you know that that's where um, malabsorption syndrome can begin to be built up in the gut? Is way back then. Do you know babies were not fed starch? They weren't fed any types of food a hundred years ago. 
200 years ago. Now, I'll tell you a story to illustrate. I had a lady email me. She said, Barbara, my little baby, he's just not thriving. How old is he? He's 10 months old. What does he eat? Bread, pasta, cereal, vegetables. How many teeth does he have? Four. What's his stomach like? Bloated. But he's skinny, so she's feeding him more. Is he breastfed? Yes. So I explained to her. And I have a lecture on um, YouTube, it's called What Shall I Feed My Baby, which explains this. So she said, what will I give him? I said, just give him fruits and vegetables, but keep back the starches. She mommy back, oh, his tummy's got right down. He's actually starting to put on weight. See, the poor child, he just wasn't, di wasn't able to process or metabolize that food. So everything was good. When the baby's 14 months old, she emails me. She said, Barbara, the baby stopped eating. He won't eat a single thing. I began to investigate. Remember, we, are all, we should all be private investigators. Is he teething? Yes, the molars are coming through. I said, oh, it's not uncommon that a baby go off the food when they're teething. They're not themselves. Is he breastfeeding? Yes. Don't worry about it. She emailed me a week later. What if he gets brain damage? I thought, where's this coming from? Brain damage? What if his muscles start to deteriorate? I said, did you know that God made breast food perfect? You know what the amazing thing about breast milk? It's perfectly designed for the baby when it's two days old. Perfectly designed from when the baby's six months old, 18 months old. My last baby, I fed him till he was three. She said, you know, it may not be enough. I said, it is enough. A, a few days later, I get an email from her father. I'm a scientist at Loma Linda University. I believe that my baby, my grandson, is going to be brain damaged because the baby's only on breast milk. We would like the baby to go to hospital and be tested. What are they going to do? Take blood? What's that going to do for the baby? And my wife say... Um, physiotherapist and she believes that the muscles are deteriorating. <laughs> See, he was very, very premmy, this baby. So he was smaller than usual for his age and he'd actually stopped crawling. I said, he's teething, he'll be all right. And then I said to the father scientist, I said, did you know that 100, 200 years ago, babies were not fed food till they were two? Do you know what that means? Galileo, Einstein, Bach, Handel. Ah, they were not fed food as babies. Did they suffer? And I said, what are they going to do to the baby in hospital? What if the baby gets so upset with all this blood being taken that it actually stops breastfeeding? So they backed off. Two weeks later, the mother emailed me, the teeth are through, the baby's feeding, eating more food. He started to crawl a bit more. I got an email from the, father, from the grandfather, this girl's father. He said, thank you so much. Can I give you something? I said, oh, if you want, here's my bank details, $400 in the bank. <laughs> that man was very, very grateful. Because I, I said, what are they going to do in hospital? Put an IG tube down the throat? Uh, force feed the baby? What's they gonna, can you see how you have to take it to its end result? These things will pass. Of course, when they're sick, they're not the same. This is a very important subject because so many people have gut problems today because they were fed starch too young as babies. The other 